one question that a lot of people have is, you know, because they live in a condominium, they think, well, I don't have a yard. You know, what can I do to uh, influence water quality or to improve water quality? And um, actually, it's interesting. I think when you live in a condominium or an apartment, um, often you'll have a large land area that you're a part of. I mean, here in our condo, we have about 26 acres that make up the whole area. And so when you think about that, it's kind of empowering because you can actually influence a much larger area. And so this was our first um, experiment with the landscaping uh, committee and we got some volunteers who came out and got some plants. Um, one of my neighbors actually collected some funding from his neighbors as well to purchase the plants, um, which were the first ones that we've installed. And then he's also added many other plants um, throughout the, the couple years that the rain garden has been in place. So the berm uh, forms the barrier for the runoff. And when it comes through from that direction, it stops here and is the, the flow is impeded by the berm. And as you can see, uh, on the, ber the berm itself has just been reconstructed. Just did that this past week uh, after it took uh, a big hit a couple of months ago in a big, big rainstorm. And I've got planted on it uh, two different species of sedge. Some of the plants that we have here uh, in the rain garden would be this, this very nice clump here is of cardinal flower, which is a forest shade plant that does well in wet environments. This is a great blue lobelia and three or four offspring that it has formed, which is also a, uh, a forest plant, a woodland plant that does well in shade. And another round of cardinal flowers over here and several ferns that you will see. This right here is an evergreen fern called a Christmas fern and it provides green color throughout the winter. The, the large bushes that you see uh, in the rain garden are, we have five different winterberry hollies, have a male in the center and flanked by two females that have beautiful berries on them right now. You can see those red berries on them, fertilized by the male. And we have a chokeberry, chokeberry bush, and to its left is a, uh, a viburnum dentatum or an arrowwood viburnum. In the very back, um, have a rescued uh, holly or American holly or an Ilex opaca, which are very difficult to come by these days, I, I have found. And um, I'm very proud of that plant because I rescued it from somebody's backyard. Um, it is a native species, the, uh, the Ilex opaca, um, and it's difficult to find uh, the original native species. There's so many hybrids of Ilex opaca have been bred behind me uh, if you can, if you can see it, uh, is is this naturalized woodland, um, and the the spot that's immediately in the view of the camera camera at this point has been populated with native plants, but there's a whole other area way back up on top of the hill that has been cleared that is waiting for the installation of of, of more native plants, and that's going to take some more money uh, to, uh, to go out and purchase those or beg borrowing and stealing them. Uh, neighbors uh, have supported the project. Uh, I've been doing um, the, the entire project, including the woodlands behind me, where we have been ripping out uh, uh, invasive vines and other invasive uh, bushes and replanting with native species. All this has been going on since the spring of 2004. And pr my neighbors, probably 15 to 20 neighbors, have contributed something in the area of $1,500. Uh, and I've contributed some of my own funds as well. So there's probably $2,000 worth of plants in here uh, that, that immediate neighbors here have voluntarily contributed. Uh, the, the challenge to doing these kinds of projects, perhaps in condominium associations, uh, is with boards, condominium boards, that may not be particularly committed to, uh, uh, to native species and to a natural look in, uh, look in the woodlands and the, and the health um, of the woodlands that are part of their properties. Uh, they most people would probably simply look at woodlands as, um, uh, as taking care of themselves um, and not any areas that need any special attention. Um, but there is a movement afoot um, and many more people are getting involved in the health of their woodlands uh, and want to invest some time and some energy in recreating the native habitats that used to be here before uh, we so disturbed the habitats uh, you know, hundreds, of, really hundreds of years ago. And so uh, it takes some education and some lobbying, some advocacy. Um, so just to, get at, just to get access 
to the woodland area um, and to this area here to put, to, put, to put a rain garden in itself was a victory. This is a sort of a classic example of some of the challenges that we face in Arlington County and in other urban areas um, in terms of dealing, you know, trying to improve with uh, the water quality in our streams and improve the health of our streams. You can see here, this is just a huge area of a uh, parking lot. And this um, condo complex was built in 1950 before there were any requirements or um, regulations about stormwater runoff and, you know, governing um, the requirement to clean the stormwater or contain stormwater. So from this large parking area, you have just a huge amount of runoff that comes down from this area and drains directly into Four Mile Run, uh, which is actually very close by um, our complex here. One thing you could think about is at the um, end there, you know, to have a rain garden or biofiltration area where you allowed some of the runoff from the parking lot to enter so it might hold a few hundred gallons of water and then, um, then it would allow that to infiltrate and nurture the plants and then the remainder could flow over into the um, storm drain. The other thing with rain gardens is that um, what, um, one of the intents, I guess, is to treat the initial flush of storm water. Um, not that they would necessarily hold and treat all the water, um, but the uh, research has shown that the more the contaminants are contained in that initial flush of water coming off the roofs and the, pave, the parking lots, um, and so if you get that initial water into the rain garden, allow that to infiltrate and treat that, the water coming behind it um, should be cleaner. This is one of uh, rain barrels that we've installed at the Arlington. We bought four so far for the condominium, um, just as an experiment to try um, a different way of managing some of our stormwater runoff. You can see that the rain barrel collects water from this gutter that drains uh, one of our buildings or part of our building. And so the bar water collects in the barrel and then it's available for this uh, homeowner here to use um, in her uh, lovely bed that she's adopted and she's doing a lot of gardening and such so she can use the water for irrigation. And then we also have an overflow hose for the barrel because rain barrels will fill up quickly um, as you do get hundreds of gallons of water that come from any you know roof area, even a fairly small roof area. Um, so this barrel holds 50 gallons and so in heavier storm events it will fill up quickly and so it's important to think about the overflow as well for the barrels. And this is a rain garden that the, we put in uh, working with the landscaping committee. And this location you see here um, kind of drains from behind the buildings over there. Some of the downspouts from the building drain over to this area. And there was a large kind of gully that had eroded from the end of the building down towards the storm drain over here. And so we really wanted to try and improve the aesthetics of the area and also um, add some water quality benefit to allow this water coming off the building to sink into the ground and to nurture the plants that are here and also to provide you know, some improved habitat by adding the, the plants as well. And then having that water sink into the ground and filter through the soil will help to clean it before it runs down um, downstream into the four mile run, which is the nearby stream that we have here to our condo. So obviously here in Arlington, you know, because we are trying to affect the health of Four Mile Run, uh, Four Mile Run flows into the Potomac River, which is a tributary um, to uh, the Chesapeake Bay. And so everything that we can do here, again, can have a positive influence on the Chesapeake Bay in terms of trying to minimize the stormwater runoff that comes from Arlington, and also trying to cut down on the amount of pollution and nutrients and other things um, that can affect the health of the Chesapeake Bay.